Hey, welcome back to the show. Hey, I really appreciate all of you that have uh, been listening, but we've been just killing it uh, on iTunes. And I just want to thank those of you who have uh, written a review and hope that those of you that are listening who haven't, if you'd go over and go over to iTunes and write a review, it can just be one word, uh, but give us give us a review if you would, five star. But it's just that written part that is key. Um, and it'll help us reach people who are looking specifically for a podcast that, you know, is similar to this one. So I appreciate that. And today we're going to talk about some things that's really, really helped me a lot um, in business. And I have, I've watched things evolve in a way uh, when I implemented these things that really changed um, how quickly I was able to see uh, positive results. Um, it sped up how quickly I could reach my goals. And, you know, it, it's interesting as I was, as a growing up as a kid, my father was a dentist and, you know, he was a very successful dentist and he was also an entrepreneur. He did a lot of things on the side, particularly mainly real estate. Um, but you may have heard me speak in previous podcasts about the opportunity I had to run a full service car wash, convenience store, uh, gas station and detail shop that he built and how absentee ownership killed him. And, and, you know, what a great benefit that was to me um, to build a network, but also to just learn on the job because I did not know how to do any of this stuff. Um, but there's some, a couple of keys. The reason I bring that up is there, there was some things that I, you know, look back on as I was able to attend management meetings early on um, prior to me taking over running this facility um, that happened when I was 19 years old, but from about 16 to 19, um, occasionally I, I was able to attend some of the management meetings, and and we we would often just go, you know, and, and there was KPIs that they would look at. But as I look back, I don't recall seeing um, it ever discussed about what things we need to do, what steps we need to take in order to get the numbers to where they needed to be or, you know, where they wanted them to be. Um, it was just really talk about the numbers. And, and this is my memory. This is a long time ago, but this is how I remember it. So, and I'm not picking on, certainly not picking on my dad or, or the management, <clears throat> um, but, you know, if you're washing X amount of cars a month and you, you're looking to wash, you know, X amount more. What is what are the things that you need to do in order to get there? You know, um, we know there's factors out of our control, and so you just have to look at averages. Uh, you know, factors like weather, for example. Um, but what are the necessary acquired actions? And this is leading into the main topic I'm I'm going to hit on today. Um, and those are called NRAs. <clears throat> so what are those necessary required actions that will help you get there? Um, so the way, like I said, is that I would attend those meetings, really, I just recall looking at the numbers, going over them. If they weren't where they, you know, needed them or <clears throat> hoped they would be. I don't ever remember a discussion, you know, on what can we do? In fact, as I look back at that, I recall that what what often was done was let's change this, you know, from a, from something kind of drastic, um, like it was a full service car wash, and originally it had four lanes, you know, where cars would get vacuumed, and then as things kind of evolved in the industry, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a exterior lane was added, and. Then an exterior lane was added where it was right next to the building, the far left lane. So then a window was cut into the building so that those with exterior could just pay right there and not have to get out of the car. But all the full service people got out of the car. Anyways, um, my point with that is it was always something kind of drastic that we that seemed like they thought things would change or increase the business when it comes down to really two things in that industry, 
and they apply actually in any business. I've used these two things in every business and they have definitely been part of my success every single time. And it's, you know, give your customer the best possible experience in the shortest amount of time that's referring to the car wash specifically there for a fair price. That didn't seem to ever be the real focus, you know, and I guess my point of bringing up the, the car wash is twofold. Uh, and my father is, is because they didn't ever define the one thing that they should focus on. And then the NRAs, the necessary required actions that the team could then focus on that following week to help them reach that goal, the one thing. And if the one thing was increase your dollar revenue per car, then that's what you would focus on. So what are the NRAs for that? You need to go and speak to all your ticket writers, incentivize them somehow by giving them probably a commission on the things that they upsell. And that would in turn be one of the necessary required actions to help them be incentivized so that they would push things rather than saying, welcome to tanks. How are you today? Can I get you, you know, what can I get you? You know, you gotta, you gotta go at them with specifically, you know, we've got our super wash on sale today. In fact, you can get it free with its uh, carpet cleaning or a hand wax for 1995. Which one would you like today? Something simple like that. So now let's break down and really just get focused. Um, the NRAs, each week <clears throat> um, I spend time and I focus on what is the one thing I need to focus on to move my business forward. Once I identify that, then I outline the necessary required actions. And that's usually anywhere from two to five steps, typically. Um, it's definitely usually more than one, but uh, more than five, very rarely. Usually it's three to four. Then I outline those and define exactly what they are and what I need to do to accomplish them. And then those are the things specifically I focus on. Now, <clears throat> how I, I start my day, and this is something I really just kind of uh, recently just focused on and realized, because there's times I struggle in the afternoons. Um, I have a hard time sleeping. And so come late afternoon, I'm kind of wiped out. Um, I just am tired. And when you're tired, you're obviously not as effective. Um, I know my mind, as far as even coming up with things that I need to do, if they're not written down, you know, that's even a struggle at times. Um, in fact, this week, it's Friday, uh, the 4th of February right now. And I've had three days in a row that I didn't sleep well at all. Last night was good, but the three prior. In fact, yesterday I came home at one o'clock. I had a gnarly headache back in my base of my skull. And you know, I just, mentally exhausted uh, and physically, because like I said, I hadn't slept well for three nights. And so this is another thing I remember hearing my dad say, and it, it makes total sense, regardless of if you have a job that, you know, has any sort of physical um, activities or not, you know, dentistry for my father. Yes, it, it is a little bit physical, you know, with the way he's got to do things in the mouth. I mean, not cardio physically, but you know, that can wear on you, but mentally we need to do the things that are toughest first. And I remember him telling me that he always scheduled his tougher cases, the crowns and the, the root canals and things like that. And in the afternoon, it was just simple stuff, the cavity feeling or whatever. I started to focus on this and do this not too long ago. And it changed everything because I, as I looked at my days and, and would look back on my weeks and, and look at the things I could do to course correct. I found that in the mornings, I was often getting sucked in to the little things, whether it's because someone emailed me about someone, maybe someone on the team sent me a message in Slack. And I let that get me focused on dealing with certain things there. Um, when I have a team behind me that can deal with those things. Um, and then when it was in the afternoon and I thought I would then take care of, you know, some of the tougher things that take more of a focus. Um, oftentimes I wouldn't, wouldn't get them done. 
and it was getting very frustrating. So just shifting that, you know, helped a ton. So no matter what, you know, business you have or what it is that you do, focus and map out those NRAs each week and then start your day by, you know, focusing on the things that you know you need to do to help you reach your goal for that one thing and do the toughest things first, okay? Um, it's, it's huge for me and my success and how I've looked at my business and see it grow once I started doing this. Too often, we talk about goals. Um, and if you don't write them down and map things out, you really just are not going to have success, flat out. In fact, I, I've, I've read it. Uh, and heard it recently last week on a podcast. I can't remember which one I was listening to, but 92% of New Year's resolutions fail. Why do you think that is? It's because, first of all, why do we think that come New Year's, if we then write some things down or think about some things we're going to do different, the things will change. Nothing's going to change unless you change how you do things. So you need to write them down. And then you've got to have a plan on how you're going to reach them. Because I can write it down and say, hey, I want to lose 20 pounds in the next six months. But if that's as far as I go, it's never going to happen. You know, most people fail at reaching their goals because they don't, they're not intentional. They don't focus on exactly what it is they want to accomplish and how they're going to get there. You know, you might hear someone say, oh, I'm going to get in shape. In fact, this year, I'm going to run a marathon. Well, have you ever run a marathon? Why don't you start with a half? Oftentimes, we're too big a dreamers. Now, hear me out here, because if you misunderstand this, you will think, I'm saying not to dream big or not to reach for bigger goals. That's not it at all. What I'm saying is we, like I said, we tend to over dream, you know, don't get rid of the big goal. Don't get rid of the goal of a marathon. But if you're going to outline what you need to do to get there, to be able to achieve that, you've got to have steps along the way. How, much are you going to run the first week, the first month? What is the timeline? Excuse me, my phone's ringing. What is the timeline to when you will reach and run that first half marathon? See, it's important to break things down because if you don't, the I truly believe most of us don't reach our goals because we set big goals and then we never break it down to really map out how we can see a path to getting there. Because I can tell you right now, if I had a goal to run a marathon, it would never, ever happen if I didn't, if I wasn't, first of all, very serious about it. It's not a goal I have, frankly, because my knees couldn't, you know, my knees are shot and it would be, you know, I, I just can't run. Um, anyways, you have to set something that you can map out a plan to get there. Because without a plan or without a goal, it's just a wish. So let's just recap here real quick. Each week, I focus on the one thing that I need to do to move my business forward. Um, we've been ramping up one of my businesses and a couple of weeks ago, the one thing was uh, we have affiliates that sell different home, in-home services like security, uh, solar, TV, and internet. And we have affiliates that work through us. And so I knew to reach the goals that we have as far as um, gross income, I knew that we had to add more affiliates. So before I could figure out how many affiliates I needed to add, I needed to figure out based on that gross income and the average ticket price of each cell, I know that our average income, excluding solar, 
um, is $270, okay? And that's actually net. There's a few factors that I won't get into that, that we get some other funds later on, but that's what we get up front. So 270. So if we were looking to increase our gross revenue by $25,000, then all I needed to do was divide the 270 into that. That would tell me how many additional cells we need. Um, and then I know we have <clears throat> with a lot of these companies uh, and their fulfillment teams that install these different services, we only run at about 80 to 81% install. So I have to factor that in. Then once I have that number, then I can say, okay, then I can go talk to affiliates. And based on the size of team they have, um, the type of marketing they have, I know roughly how many sales they could do per day per person so that I can figure that number out. Well, I knew I needed to get three affiliates um, that, that averaged five sales a day. Actually, the number was seven because it needed to be five installs. And so by doing that, it makes it a lot easier and say, man, I have got to figure out the one thing this week to increase my revenue this month by 50K. 25k whatever that number was that can be overwhelming just like it can be overwhelming if i gotta think i gotta run a marathon so stick to your big goals and your big dreams but focus on a win several wins in fact prior to the big one so in regards to a marathon when is it you're going to run the 5k then when is it going to run the half marathon? And then set your date for that full marathon. And that'll help you. I mean, it made a biggest difference in my businesses. So map things out, be intentional. And then each week, focus on the one thing you've got to do to move you forward to reaching your goal. And always break things down, you know, look out whatever you're looking to accomplish in life. You know, I'd start at 10 years and, and work backwards to five. Um, but in business, I typically will, as far as a business that I have and I'm building, you know, I look at one year where I want to be, and then I just work things backwards to come up with my weekly one thing. And then, like I said, each week, I'm going to map out the necessary required actions, the NRAs that'll help me get there. That helps you build confidence because you can see the little wins each day as you, you know, accomplish these NRAs, um, especially as you reach that goal each week. And then, you know, whenever you choose to do it over the weekend or early first thing Monday morning, I'd, I'd suggest you do it over the weekend um, because Monday mornings, I oftentimes, you know, I'm going to get distracted and things are going to come up. And the next thing you know, you didn't get it done. So as you, as you look back on your prior week, you know, look at how you did. And be honest with yourself on where you could improve. Uh, maybe if you didn't have success in, in reaching that goal, the one thing, look back and be honest, where did I mess up? Did I, did I not do the tough stuff first thing in the morning? So, you know, did that not get done? Some of those things, evaluate how you did then course correct. That's going to make a big difference. So, you know, I hope this is helpful. Um, you know, appreciate any comments, suggestions, feel free to reach out to me. You can reach me at steve at lifeafteraddictionandindictment.com and send me an email. You know, I'll definitely take the time to respond, uh, but I hope you have a great day. Make it a great year. You know, it's early still of 2022. If you haven't really mapped out your goals for the year, stop. Right when you get done listening to this and write them down. And then put that routine into place each week where you map out the one thing each week to help you get to where you want to go. Once again, I appreciate your time. Uh, if you jump on over to Apple iTunes and, and write a review, I'd really, really appreciate it. And have a fantastic day. Take care.